Welcome to another episode of the Random Hour. As always, I'm your co-host Devin Moore, and Kyle can't be here tonight, so I asked somebody to come on board, and I'm going to give him the floor real fast and introduce himself. Patrick, the floor is all yours real fast. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm an aromantic and asexual content creator, um, and I go by the handle Fluently Aspec. All right, thank you. Hey, Patrick. Uh, before we dive into questions, thank you for coming on today. Uh, Guys, he's an awesome creator. He's created some original poetry and things like that. He's awesome. Go check out his TikTok and things like that before we dive on in. Of course, his all his social media handles will be in the description below. So, hey, go check him out. He's a great poet. Uh, and so we're about to have some fun here today. So, Patrick, you ready for my first question? Yes, sir. All right. So first question, we're going to get we're going to hit a heavy hitter. Uh, how do you, what is your experience with asexuality and aromanticism and pride? So. I attended my first Pride two years ago. Um, I've only been out as an Arrow Ace individual for about three years. And um, I actually just put out a video recently at the time of filming. This is in June, but I made a video preparing people for possibly going to their first Pride based on my experiences. And some things that I've noticed... Uh, it helps to know the size of the event. And if you're somebody that doesn't do crowds very well, you know, look for something a little more out of the bigger cities. Because I do live near a very big city. And I bypassed going to their pride for the first couple of years. Actually, I'm about to attend theirs in a few days for the first time. But... I started with a smaller city, worked up to a medium-sized city, actually our state capital, Madison. And then now I'm going to be attending the Milwaukee Pride this coming weekend. Um, so that was one thing that I noticed is size matters. If you're somebody that that's going to be an issue for, take it slow. You don't have to dive into like Chicago or something like that right away. Um, I also noticed that if you're somebody that's not quite comfortable wearing your pride colors of your pride flag. Um, another tip that I gave was wear your colors subtly, something that'll blend in being that I am in Southeastern Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Um, I wore a Milwaukee bucks Jersey the first time their colors are green. And in the nineties, their colors were purple. So I wore a matching retro nineties, purple hat for asexuality and the green was for aromanticism and fit perfectly in and i was still repping my colors it felt great good that's good okay that's pretty neat i didn't even think about that yeah that's uh um uh, yeah that's pretty neat i it's funny kyle always keeps us in the kyle again keeps me in the loop of that kind of stuff so uh, f uh this episode's actually already out of this recording guys we decided to uh kyle it was really heavy on kyle's heart that we did the asexuality spectrum back in 2020 um we've kyle felt like we did them dirty in fact patrick here said off camera that he loved it uh, patrick thank you so much it's funny now kyle actually tells me he's like dude I, we got to redo it he's like i just i don't like it but Again, thank you for so much. Uh, thank you so much for praising that back in 20. And as of this recording, part one of the revised uh, asexuality spectrum is out now. And actually, the following week will be the part two episode for that during uh, asexuality week and things like that. So you guys check it out. Also check out Patrick's stuff when this episode drops as well and things of that nature. But all right, enough with the hard heavy enough with the hard heavy heavy stuff. Patrick, it's time to have some fun here on the Random Hour because we are powered by caffeine and ADHD. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. All right. What is your favorite Pokemon? Out of all the generations, just Ooh. pick one. Any generation. Theory and Form Landorus. Ooh, okay. And my reason for that, um, I attend Pokemon Go uh, regional championships, local championship tournaments, challenges, cups. And uh, specifically at the regional championships, I always bring a, one of the sitting cuties. A lot mm -hmm. of the, the players will do that. Uh, mine is Theory Inform Landorus because my first Shundo in Pokemon Go, for those that don't play Pokemon Go, that's a shiny 100% IV Pokemon. When you have the two combined, it's incredibly rare. 
I have two of them. My first one was Theory Informed Landris. It's a big deal to me because I caught it on the very first day that Shiny was even possible. Ooh. What was so, that, all the way back in 2017? Uh, it was 2021 or 2022. I want to say uh. April 2022. Um, because they put out the other form of Landris, the Incarnate version, first. Then the okay. Shiny for Theory and Form. Which, Theory and Form is actually the strongest non-shadow, non-mega ground type in the game. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, recently getting back into Pokemon. My brother surprised me with a Switch two years ago, so like I've gotten back into it. The, uh, but nowadays, I'm, you know, even though Scarlet, have you played Pokemon Scarlet yet? Oh, yeah. I, of course, I went with Violet. Okay. I, you know what, you know, this kind of makes me upset. I did not know to complete the Pokédex for uh, one of the Pokemon, you got to have a special armor, and you can only get one of the armors for one of the evolved forms and Violet. So I'm like, all right, looks like I'm about to restart up Pokemon Go because I'm going to catch that sucker. I can't think of the Pokemon's yeah. name, but uh, I've been playing that a lot, least, a lot recently. And I've also got into, uh, because Pokemon Legend of Arsenus, which, by the way, is one of the best Pokemon games out in a while. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've played that one too. What is your opinion oh, on yeah. that one? I love the open world style. It it was such a game changer. And it was mm -hmm. so fun to do the um outbreaks and get shinies mm -hmm. that way right off right off the bat. Um I wanna say like day two I already had a shiny Gumi. Like you wanna know something funny? Game being out. So I bought the game on opening day. And like I said, I took a break from Pokemon. I was playing, you know, as a, I was playing Pokemon constantly in 2010 with Pokemon Black and White. I, you know, I kind of was like, all right, I'm over Pokemon or whatever. Mm -hmm. Again, my brother surprised me with a Switch. So I was like, okay, it's Nintendo, Pokemon. I was like, I'll get back into it. So I bought Legend of Arceus, and I forgot all about Shinies. I forgot about mm -hmm. them. As soon as I booted up the game, I'm walking around the first area map. A Shiny Shinx was out in the open, and it was yellow. And one of my buddies called me, who's a huge Pokemon fan. And he's like, hey, Devin, what are you doing? I said, dude, I think my game's broken. My Shinx is yellow. He's like, oh, my God, do not turn off the game. That's a shiny. Catch it. I said, a shiny? He's like, yeah, Devin, they're rare. Catch them. And I was like, okay, I'll catch it. And now it's like, oh, it's stats are OP. It's like level 60. I, Legend of Arceus was a fresh breath there. But I'm with you. The open world, the open world yeah. is just it's a, it's a, you know, and now they're coming out with a sequel for Legend of Arceus. I'm like, dude, I can't mm -hmm. wait. Yeah. But I will say this: I recently bought a sword, Pokemon Sword, because to complete mm -hmm. the Pokédex and Legend of Arceus, you need to have a save game file of swords for one of the legendaries, and to get Do, uh, not Dokia, Darkia, Darkia, Dokia from Diamond Pearl, the Shadow Legendary. I feel like I'm saying oh, his name yeah, wrong. Um, Dark Ride. Dark Ride. Yeah, Dark Ride. To get yeah. Dark Ride, you got to have a save file, a uh, brilliant diamond or shiny pearl. So I was like, all right, I got to waste fifty dollars. I got to complete this Pokédex, and that game, I've, st I still haven't completed that Pokédex. I spent hours on that game, but I love it. It's like Minecraft meets mm -hmm. Pokemon, and you just spend hours just crafting. Yeah, and but of course, oh, go ahead. In the uh, core game, it's my favorite shiny I've ever gotten on the Switch or Game Boy or any of that. Uh, full odds. Still pretty early with the game. I got the shiny Crobat. You know the Crobat that just flies around in that one area? Yep. I got the shiny of that, and it was one of the most impossible catches I've ever made because you can only use the the wing ball or whatever it's called. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. It's And difficult. it's such a hard catch, but it was the shiny. I had to get it. So I, uh -huh. I spent probably like two hours trying to get that, but God. I was so excited for that one. The one that gets on my nerves is in the first area map. It's that Gyarados that's flying in the air by the mm -hmm. river. And to complete yeah. Gyarados' uh, Pokédex entry, you got to go catch him. I'm like, Phew. I still haven't completed it yet. I just gave up. The first time I got him, I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming back to this later. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's funny. If I had to pick my favorite right now, uh, it's one of the OGs. It's from uh, uh, Gold and Silver. It would be uh, Cyndaquil. Mm, that's a good one. They're about oh, to true. do... A at the time of our recording right now, they're about to do a uh, Community Day Classic in Pokemon Go for, Cinde for uh, Cyndaquil. Ooh, okay. So that's, that's going to be later this month in June. 
Yeah, I know someone's gonna be watching. Like, oh, right. oh, yeah. Be like, sorry guys, we just uh, <laughs> we scheduled a yeah. lot of a lot of content. Uh, <laughs> but no, man, Cyndaquil is just like I've I've always been a. It's funny. I used to be, you know, out of the OG series. I used to be a Squirtle fan, but now I'm going mm-hmm. towards Fire, which is weird because yeah. I'm not usually. I'm not using aggr- I, I used to used to be an aggressive player, but now I am. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get this battle done <laughs> before you weaken yeah, my stats. No, I, was, I was the same way. I was uh, Squirtle, um, Pikachu because I got Pokemon Yellow as a kid. But if yep. I could have picked, I would probably would have gone Squirtle, Totodile. But then somewhere mm-hmm. along the line, I think around Sun, I went Litten, then Scorbunny, now Fue Coco. You know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I made the same switch. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So I have the Pokemon home. So when I bought Pokemon sword, I was like, dude, I'm getting all three starters. But when I first mm-hmm. played it for a quick second, the one that sticked out to me was the grass type, which is, a, uh, Oh gosh, the grass type one. It's like, it's the monkey. Oh, um, oh, Grookey. Gosh. Yeah. Grookey. Grookey. Uh, yeah. I was like, Oh, Grookey. You could, I said, dude, you're coming with me. You're going to be my first choice. <laughs> uh, but then Scarlet, I chose, um, I chose the the crocodile, the flaming crocodile, mm-hmm. for Scarlet, yep, and I'm just same. like, yes, he's yeah. pretty good. I mean, I've uh, I'm not, oh, yeah. I haven't beaten Scarlet yet because I'm kind of just messing around, but he's pretty good for a fire type. Yeah, and his final evolution, Skeledurge, is actually right now kind of a niche in the meta in Pokemon Go. Uh, it's not used a whole lot, but it's got some interesting play. I've been using it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, I'm one of those people too. Like I said, we're on this show. We're powered by ADHD and caffeine. I will literally pick a game up, and I'm like, man, I'm putting second. On, I'm buying something else, or I'm just like, all right, I'm going back to this. I'll beat it eventually. Heck, I just got. They just fixed uh, as of this recording. They finally fixed Cyberpunk uh, 2027. So I was like, cool, Cyberpunk. I'll get into this. Oh yeah. And I just sat there for like three hours, nothing like GTA with robot parts. I was like, this is awesome. And now I haven't played in like three days. I'm like, meh, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So Patrick, let me ask you this. What got you into poetry? I've always been into poetry, actually. Um, I really couldn't tell you what it was. I remember, you know, writing poetry as early as second grade and um, come fifth grade. I remember we did the dare program in school and, I had to do the the essay contest, mm. and I remember the I wrote essay a poem contest. For that. Yep, I wrote a poem for that. I got a medal for it for some reason, because why you need to give a medal for a poetry <laughs> or an essay contest for the Dare program? I don't know, but whatever. Uh, read it in front of the school, but I've just I've always loved poetry, and um, even in high school, I tried to start an emo band. Emphasis on tried. I had an awesome name for it. We had songs, or at least we had lyrics for songs. No one ever wanted to practice. Really? So I I ended up having to be the one to go to our uh, football coach slash English teacher and tell him that we were dropping out of the talent show. And uh, he didn't like that too much. Yeah. Because it was like the I day bet. before and the programs were all printed up and everything. Ironically, Oof. I'm the only one that wanted to still do it, but I couldn't by myself. So, yeah. <laughs> but, Lord, speaking of food, because we always talk about food on this show, what's your go-to <laughs> snack? Ooh, go-to snack. Uh, I actually really like the uh, sweet, and, sweet and spicy chili Doritos, the purple oh. bag. Ooh, there you go. I actually haven't I really seen that bag in a while. Ones. Yeah, I really enjoy those ones. I haven't actually seen that bag in a while. I don't know if it's got popular down here in Georgia. I haven't seen it in a while. Is it popular up there? Uh, not pop. They're not more popular than like the Cool Ranch or the Nacho Cheese, but <laughs> I, I'd say they're a close third, maybe fourth, because no, there's that spicy cheese one. Ooh, yeah, and the dark red. Dark red. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, Doritos take me back to another thing down here. Um, I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, have you noticed the kids lately have been eating a lot of Takis? Takis has gotten big. Oh, yeah. Takis have been huge for the last few years I ever got as a teacher. Uh, outside of, like, my actual students in that. Um, 
few months ago, I went to Comic-Con in Chicago to C2E2. And uh, I met David Yost, who played the original Blue Power Ranger. Nice! And um, I, I actually also met Amy Jo Johnson. They were both phenomenal. But uh, David Yost especially, I mentioned to him that I run a comic book club at my school. And that we have for the last two years been reading the boom studios, mighty Morphin power Rangers story. Yeah. I just got into that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he kind of perked up and he goes, Oh, you're a teacher. I said, yeah. And he goes, you know, you're the real superhero. Yeah. And that's I was good. Just, like <laughs> I'm a nineties kid and hearing that from Billy, who I watched when I was five years old, <laughs> is the most surreal thing, but such a like meaningful compliment. It meant the world to me. Oh yeah. Dude. Speaking of power Rangers, have you read power Rangers return? Um, I read the first issue. I just haven't had a chance to read the rest, but I loved the first issue. Oh, I, uh, so at my, so it's funny you say power Rangers, uh, where I'm at in South Georgia, the red powers from time Force in October, he's coming to one of our local to- comic book shops in town. Hmm. And I was like, dope. But I'm like you. Um, I'm kind of, and it's funny, I'm trying to get Kyle into Power Rangers. We're trying, mm-hmm. we're going to do a Power Ranger episode one of these days. But he's like slowly getting into it. Cause again, I'm like, we're like you. We're like late, we were born in the late 90s, you know, late 90 babies, early 2000 kids. Mm-hmm. And dude, I love, dude, Power Rangers Returns. Uh, that first issue was good. And I have issues two and four. I thought I had three. I didn't, but it's a pretty good book. You're going to be impressed. That's awesome. I've actually met the Red Time Force Ranger three times now. Uh-huh. He's fantastic. Jason Font is a very willing to talk with you type of guy. Um, when I first met him, he didn't have any line at C2E2. He's he's from Chicago. Okay. So that that's his local, you know. Um, so he tries to go to that one for sure every year. And, uh, I'd already spent all my money that I had budgeted. I didn't bring any more cash, but he was still willing to just chat and, and let me talk with him, even though, you know, I obviously wasn't getting an autograph, wasn't paying for a photo op. Um, just got to chat with him for a bit. And then he came here to Milwaukee at a comic book store. Uh, my friend and I were the last ones in line. It was middle of December, which Wisconsin in December is not friendly. Okay. So just snow up to your nose and it's ridiculous. Uh, so wasn't very well advertised and people didn't really want to be out on the streets anyway. So only like seven people showed up at the time. So we got to talk to him for 20, 25 minutes afterwards. And we're telling him, we're giving him like advice on where to eat, where to get a drink. We told him, Oh, you got to hit up, uh, this place on Water Street because it's the place that Charles Barkley got arrested <laughs> and they've got his <laughs> mugshot back no. when he was playing for the Suns back in the day. Oh, that's a wild story that you should look into later, by the way. Okay. Um, but yeah, he he was very nice, uh, and he even filmed on my phone a video for our school's morning announcements advertising the comic book club. Nice. I know so I'm excited a, to meet he's him. He's a fantastic person. Yeah, you're going to you're going to love him. I'm not going to lie, I thought about it. I'm secretly like we have business cards for our shows and I'm like mm-hmm. I secretly want him on this show. <laughs> I'm I'm like, "Hey man, you know, if you ever just bored, if you just want to talk to me for like 30 <laughs> minutes, man, just hit, hit that email up right there and I'll hop on with you for about 30 minutes. Heck, 15 minutes, man." <laughs> That's yeah. so, so he's a generally nice guy cuz I'm always I'm see oh, to yeah. me, I'm always nervous yeah. to meet people cuz I'm like, "Dude, they these are my heroes." And what if the and obviously people are going to have bad days, but I'm like, "I don't want to have a bad uh, experience with them." Yeah. And I mean, I don't I try not to say that like everybody's a good person because I understand like everybody's experience with somebody's either good or bad and you know, if something ever comes out about somebody, I, even if I did have a good experience, I'm like, I also trust other people's experiences. And if somebody else had a bad experience that reflects that person that I also met in a bad way, I hear them out and I don't 
try to be like, oh, well, I met them and they were super nice because that's not my place. Right. But, but yeah, in my experience personally, he was a great guy. Okay. Yeah. He's coming down here in South Georgia in October. I was actually excited because mm-hmm. uh, growing up, uh, the series for me was Power Rangers, Lost Galaxy, Lightspeed Rescue, mm-hmm. and Time Force. In my yep. opinion, and it's <laughs> speaking to my kids, there was one day, and I'm sure in the, I, I, I teach high school, and I don't know how this conversation popped up. There was one day I was talking to one of my coworkers, and I trust my kids to, and I was right next door talking to one of my coworkers real fast. So kids were already in class. I needed to ask them something. I come back in the classroom. They're having a Power Ranger debate. They're like, Coach Dev, who's the best Power Ranger team? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude. Are you really going to ask me, a 90s kid, early 2000 kid, who's the best Power Ranger team? And they're like, yeah, coach, it's Beast Morphers, ain't it? I said, boy, get this stuff out of here. I said, man, it is. See, for me, I love Light Speed Rescue. And I'm like, man, it's Light Speed Rescue all the way. That's and a good one. They're like, they're like, one of the ki- one of my seniors who graduated this year, he got up. He's like, yeah, coach, that's what I'm talking about, coach. The early season, go <laughs> get him. I said, yeah, man, get that new stuff out of here. Mm. Oh, man. No, I'm excited. I hope I get to meet him. I hope I don't forget or I'm not busy with football that day because I was like, dude, I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to meet him. Time Force is probably my second favorite team. Uh, number one would be, even though everybody's all about the original, original lineup of Mighty Morphin, it's the second version for me. Ooh, it's that's a good one. The Tommy, Kimberly, Billy, Rocky, Adam, Aisha. <laughs> And I have a DVD of the first movie signed by four out of the six now. Awesome. Yeah, it's signed by uh, Jason David Frank, uh, God rest his soul. Yes. Uh, I was I was very fortunate to meet him and have an amazing experience meeting him. Uh, David Yost and Amy Joe Johnson, who I've already mentioned, and Steve Cardenas, also who played Rocky. Nice. So, Let me ask and you I'm this. I'm meeting Adam this summer too, so Ooh. I'll have five out of the six. Let me ask you this: since you're a Power Ranger fan, mm-hmm. yeah, do you think do you think Turbo was one of the worst seasons? I was not a fan of it. Um, even as a kid, I wasn't a fan of Justin, but I also recognized that, uh, you know, he was a kid doing his best in the spot that he was given, the writing wasn't great for him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really do respect Blake Foster for doing all the cons that he does and everything now Mm -hmm. and being as involved with the community as he is. Uh, But yeah, the writing was not very good. And the whole like departure mid season wasn't great either. Yeah. Where all the original team kind of leaves. It's like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I you know as an adult when I get bored like I'll just pick a team and I'll like rewatch them. But I'm like as an mm-hmm. adult I'm like I could see I I could see why people hate this and I'm like yeah In Space did kind of save that franchise. Oh yeah, because In Space is good. In Space is really good. Yeah, really good. And Lost yeah. Galaxy, even though Lost Galaxy sometimes and I'm actually rewatching Lost Galaxy right now. Uh, even though Lost Galaxy has that like villain of the week, there's there's some good mm-hmm. stories in Lost Galaxy. Yeah. Especially the end, which I'm trying to get yeah. through the end. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, something that I did say to Jason Font when I uh, met him here in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. um, something that I really love about Time Force is just how they approach topics that you wouldn't even necessarily expect from Power Rangers. That if you think critically as an adult, you're like, oh, wow, this is a whole classism racism you know the the mutants you could look at in the same vein as you look at x-men as an allegory for like racism and because they most of they didn't do anything wrong you know why are the mutants who like there was the one that uh trip the green ranger tries to help because all it did that was wrong was like steal a loaf of bread for its starving family Mm -hmm. you know um but why aren't humans who do something like that or even worse crimes put in canisters and and um, how treated how they were um and then the whole issue with jason font's character wes um 
rejecting his father's money and saying, no, this is what I want to do with my life. And this is how you should use that money. And is the whole conflict there with classism. There was a lot of really deep themes to that season that as a kid went way over my head. Okay. I'll have to revisit times force. I, re- mm. I don't know what it was. I was like, Oh, I'm gonna watch time force. And that's when Kyle got into it. Cause he asked me one day, he's like, what are you watching? I said, power. And she's like, why? I said, dude, you just gotta get into it. And he's mm. Kyle's like, I said, <laughs> we're run off of caffeine and ADHD and he has bad ADHD. And so one day he was sitting at work. He's like, dude, Power Rangers is actually pretty dope because he didn't grow up watching it. Mm-hmm. And he's watching as an adult. He said, hey, this is pretty dope. And then he'll text me threatening randomly some days. I won't hear from him a couple days. And then he'll text me. And he'll be like, why do they do this in Power Rangers? Why did they fight a pig with a spar helmet? Why are they? Why does Rocky have a pumpkin on his head? Dude, don't ask. Just enjoy it. Just accept. Yep. Just, just It was the 90s. Just yep. enjoy it. And I asked him, I said, who's your favorite Ranger? He's like, he's like, I, he's like, I could see why Tommy was a fan favorite. He he's a good dude. When he was the Green Ranger, man, he was taking names. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, man. When you watch for the first time, you're actually scared because like he, what kills me is like he was able to get into the cockpit and he just said, bro, I'm taking all your names. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh man, sorry, I went on a weird Power Ranger rant. That wasn't one of the questions. <laughs> I was just like, I want to go on a weird Power Ranger rant real fast. Uh. So let me ask you: What was some of your, what is some of your favorite uh, asexuality represent, representation out there? Um, personally, my favorite is Gwenpool in Marvel. Ooh, okay. Um, she's Arrow Ace, just revealed about a year ago, and uh, I just I love the idea of a character who's breaking the fourth wall, not because she's crazy like Deadpool is, but because she's literally from our world. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she understands that she's in a comic book and understands how like the industry works and realizes, okay, I can't die as long as my comic is popular and people are buying it. So I'm going to just keep doing crazier and crazier stuff to keep people buying my comics so that I'm literally invincible. It's kind of brilliant. It is. And then on top of that, like she can time travel by like actively moving back pages Mm -hmm. in her own comic. Like it's so meta that it's brilliant. It is. That's one thing I liked about her when she first came on. Cause everybody's like, Oh, it's just a Deadpool variant. But it's like, uh, she might be more OP than Deadpool guys. If you think about it. Yeah. And she knows everyone's secrets and any weaknesses and connections that they have. I mean, she's a comic book fan, just like us. It's it's like if one of us wound up in a comic. Oh, God. If I end up in a comic, I pray I have, like, the powers of Spider-Man or something. Because I'm a big Spider-Man fan. I'm trying mm-hmm. to, uh, as of this recording, I'm trying to collect the first 1,000 issues of Amazing Spider-Man. I'm... I'm mm-hmm. This week, I've actually bought Amazing Spider-Man 700.1 through 0.5 and made the recurrent run, which I don't know if you're a big Spider-Man fan. People are hit or miss with it. I could see why it's had its rough moments, but it's recently getting really good, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I haven't kept up with it lately. Um, I'm obviously familiar with, with Spider-Man. Um but yeah, I, I haven't read a Spider-Man comic in a while, to be honest. Yeah, no, it's... I'll, uh, check, I'll have to check it out. It's good, especially get the uh, current run of issues 47 through 52. Yeah, 52 is out now. I don't have 51, 52 okay. yet, but it's out. It's it's really good, in my opinion. And it's funny, awesome. my wife's trying to get into comic books, and she knows I'm a big Spider-Man fan, and some of the stuff they do to Spider-Man, she's like, wow. Why would he do that? And then she'll be like, yeah, he deserved it. <laughs> he's, he's like, some stuff they're like, oh, poor Spidey. And then sometimes, you know, when Peter has those arcs where he's like being a jerk and she's like, hey, he kind of deserved it. I was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he has his moments. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, man. Gang, oh, Gang War is another good one. Uh, Rita, actually, I recommend this. Wait for the volume book to come out. Uh, I don't, Amazing Spider Man Gang War. Mm-hmm. It's one of their big events. Marvel just recently did. It's really good. I recommend it. Okay. Especially for your kit, for your combo cups uh, and things like that. I recommend it. 
I was actually telling my kids that awesome. other thing too. And the kids love, like, sometimes I'll get bored and during my break, I'm just reading a comic book. And some of the kids mm. will swing by, they're like, Coach, what you reading? I'm like, dude, I'm bored. It's my lunch break. <laughs> I'm reading. And it's just like you said, you build that uh, connection with them. And I, oh my gosh, another story. Uh, we literally had a debate on my, and we had an anime debate on my board. I literally, I was like, all right, we got a couple minutes. What do y'all want to talk about? And we literally had an, on my whiteboard, we had like anime discussions. I was like, who's an OP character? It's like Todoroki from My Hero or so and so. And one of the principals came by because I used to be an ISS teacher. And I did some discipline this year still. And then he come by. He's like, he's like, Coach Deb, what's on your board? I said, Coach, we had some free time. It turned into a debate. I just haven't erased it yet. Uh, and he's like, why haven't you erased it yet? I said, Coach, this debate's still going. <laughs> it's still going. These kids won't stop. He's like, is it bothering you? I said, no, it's just interesting. They'll be working. And then just simply, they just raise their hand. They're like, Coach, I got a question. And I'm like, is it a debate question? Yes. What is it? And it's just, you know how these kids are. It's just a floodgate. And it's like, oh, and yeah. I'm like, I'm going to just ride this out for a second. I mean, it's not that bad. It's not that like they're being appropriate or anything. They're just like, mm-hmm. and it's like, just ride it out. Just ride it out. Yeah. <laughs> They'll calm down in a second. Just let them talk. Oh, man. It's just kids, man. They, very interesting. Sorry, you had opened up no core memory because we had so many animated topics on my board. Mm-hmm. And this year, when I had to erase it for like the post planning period, I said, oh, I don't miss those debates. <laughs> oh man. Uh let me ask this. Uh let me ask this. Favorite speaking of emo music, do you have a favorite emo band? What's your go to one that you've been listening to lately? Um I've got a lot of favorite emo bands. Um actually a little background on my uh online handle, fluently a spec, stems from um lyrics from an emo song lips by the main oh okay um at the time that that song came out i was actually a member of their street team technically i still am i never officially left but uh i was on a stream call with the stream team and um it was the night that that song was supposed to drop the album hadn't come out yet and their drummer pat joined the call on zoom and he's like hey just wanted to surprise you all thank you for all of your promotional work we really appreciate it i'm here to play the song for you even though it's not coming out for like another five hours you guys get to hear it first nice. so i'm like that's awesome i'll check it out so i pulled uh three words from one of the lines of the song fluent in tragedy and that became my online handle for a little while uh after a while of uh of posting stuff about asexuality on Twitter using that name, I started thinking, you know, a lot of my stuff lately has been about asexuality and, and I want to start talking about that more and also talking about aromantic uh, issues as well, because I was still figuring that side of myself out at the time. So I didn't want to completely change it because for one, I didn't want people to not find me right away by just having a completely new name. So at least if they type in fluent, they'll still find me. But then at the same time, I really liked the idea of like fluency with it because I wanted to talk about these words and what they mean. So that's how fluently a spec became my online handle, Hmm. Um, which the main have a weird connection to my asexuality, like my whole journey. Uh, 2016, uh, I was going through a pretty rough spot. And um, I did not have a school lined up for the following school year. It was the middle of summer. Um, and at in that year, my state was the, I think the second to last state to actually pass their budget for the following year. So schools didn't even know what they were going to have. So hiring anywhere was pretty much non-existent at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but my buddy's like, look, we bought our tickets to warp tour. Let's just go. Um, this was my roommate at the time. So we went and it was 
an amazing day, but we got front row for the main stage. Nice. And uh, I missed a call. Being 2016, and we just talked about Pokemon Go, that was the summer Pokemon Go came out. Mm -hmm. So during their set, while they're on stage singing Girls Do What They Want, I'm looking at my phone trying to figure out, oh, was this a school? They didn't leave me a message. What, you know? And um, all of a sudden, my roommate's hitting me. He's like, hey, they're calling you up on stage. So I g get called up on stage. Um, and John, their lead singer, uh, says to me just real quietly off mic, were you playing Pokemon Go during our our set? And... <laughs> Like so many things were going on in my head at the moment. I couldn't think straight. And I said, yes. <laughs> um, but I got to sing the rest of girls do what they want with the band. And he got the whole place chanting my name afterwards. And I've never had a moment like that in my life. Um, it gave me a lot of hope and it really like changed a lot about my mental health because it gave me a new strategy. Anytime that I was struggling, I would just, put myself back in that moment and try to hear that again and feel that, that feeling of mattering again. Good. And that got me through a couple of years. Um, so then I became a bigger fan of the band, ended up flying to Phoenix in 2019 for their uh, 8123 fest that they put on. Uh, basically they take over downtown Phoenix for a weekend. Wow. And have a bunch of bands uh, that year. Mayday Parade, uh, Real Friends, We the Kings were all there. Uh, it was a great, great show. But I didn't have anyone to go with. And a whole bunch of people started this group me chat, all people that were going by themselves. So I think there were like 60 of us that were all supposed to meet up there. We hung out as a large group for a little while. It didn't quite work out. We ended up breaking one of the photo booths because we tried to jam like 40 people into it. Uh, <laughs> whoops. Uh, <laughs> and then finally we realized, okay, let's start making smaller groups. And people started splintering off into smaller groups. The last night before we all left, it was down to four of us. And we we're in one of the guy's Airbnbs. And it was me, another guy, and two girls. Mm -hmm. And one of the two girls is an editor for healthline.com oh. specifically for um, sex health articles. And so she asked us to do this online quiz of, you know, things that you're into in that realm. And they're all just doing this real calmly. Right. And nothing is a big deal to them. And I'm looking through it. I'm like, what even is this? You know, um, things that like, I thought, okay, yeah, the, some people make videos of this or whatever and put, put it out there, but this isn't like a lot of people. And sure enough, it there were a lot of things there that surprised me that people were like, yeah, it is what it is. And that was when I was like, maybe I should look into why I don't have that reaction. So in a weird way, within, you know, two months, I figured out that I'm asexual. So the main having that fluent part in there is also kind of a tribute to the main being a part of my journey. Okay. That's pretty neat. Uh, I actually, I'm going to recommend a uh, emo band to you. We actually did an episode mm -hmm. with them. Uh, I feel like you might like them. They're called Felicity. We did an episode okay. on them. Their biggest hits is the song Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen, which came out maybe two months ago. Uh, this past summer, they had a song with Northeast, no, North Point called Emo Trash. And then their okay. new song this came out was Love Sick Blues. And they're actually about to go okay. on tour with 21 Pilots. So I'm like, oh, wow. I know. That's, Dude, that's awesome. A, yeah. That's a story I got to tell you off camera. I was, I was so excited to get them because I was a fan of there. And the fact that I booked them, it was like, yeah. Yes, That's I'll awesome. tell you that. I can tell you that story because they were also early on this year. So shout out to Felicity if you guys are listening, man. It was awesome having you. Uh, love that. Yeah. I'll have to check them out. Oh, man, dude. I love them. I, dude, I sing their stuff all the time. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Patrick, uh, speaking of which, I know you wanted to uh, shout out those uh, boards real quick, and then we're pretty yeah. much done here. If you want to shout out those, uh, not boards, those, uh, let's, let's, stri- the two things behind you, I'm sorry, words are hard. Yes. So uh, in the next couple of weeks of this airing is going to be Asexuality Awareness Week, shortened to Ace Week sometimes. And uh, it's the last full week of October. And here behind me are the proclamations for Ace Week here in the state of Wisconsin for the past two years, 2022 and 2023. Um, That's something that has been a part of everything that I've been doing with the Fluently A-Spec project that I do is trying to spread awareness, spread education, spread understanding of the asexual and aromantic spectrums. And a big part of that is recognition from our local and state governments. And uh, there's a lot of other people who are doing similar work. I know uh, there's a group in Seattle that's gotten Washington to recognize Ace Week a few times now. Um, Another person that you can check out uh, goes by the name of Gentle Giant Ace. Um, Their name is Marshall Blount. And they have gotten Pennsylvania to recognize Ace Week the last few years. Um, Another one that you could check out, The Ace Couple. They're a podcast. And uh, they've gotten Kansas City to recognize it. Um, Wisconsin at the time became the eighth state to do so. Okay. Yeah, the Ace Couple, we're familiar with. We haven't hit them up Mm -hmm. yet. But we're familiar with the Ace Couple. Ace Couple, if you happen to come across this, if you guys want to collab, uh, (laughs) hit us up. (laughs) Uh, i'm sorry but no we've heard about them uh yeah okay we've heard about them the other one we haven't heard about but i'll we'll do some research on thank you we'll do some research on them and we'll see what can happen but yeah patrick uh this is pretty much the outro right here uh where can the people at home find you um you can find all my stuff at link tree um l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash fluently a spec all my links are there Okay. Well, guys, that's pretty much going to end our episode here for the day. As again, if you like what you heard, this is the Random Hour by Kyle Crump. As always, you can come check me out on my sports podcast, More Sports, the sports podcast for everybody. And, of course, we have our movie review podcast, Popcorn Buckets, where we review a movie uh, every Sunday. And then, of course, you can follow us on our YouTube channel, Random Incorporated, where you also see the video version of this interview on there as well as one of our other guests that we've had. Even we've talked about a guest off camera which shout out to black thanos and of course we also did the band felicity as well and you can follow us on social media you can follow us on twitter at rando corporal one and on instagram as rando boys and uh let's see if i miss anything oh and you can follow my cringe on tiktok at uh devin more comedy where i also will uh post snippets of this interview and some more cringe stuff so come on and enjoy and i'm also on twitch tv at dvim25 where i just stream and play whatever i feel like but uh yeah pretty much cover it patrick you got any last words thank you for having me this was fun and um yeah random hour check it out every week (laughs) until next time guys all right let me just see